Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 as well as Exodus chapter 7 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for your word Lord Jesus. Bless your children. Help us to have understanding in this scripture conflation Lord God. Help us to be better warriors for you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Ephesians chapter six, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So this is the scripture from the Lord that he has given us at this hour. And it's basically talking about the fact that our enemy is not necessarily the seen enemy. Yes, we have an enemy that sometimes we can see, but usually those things are influenced by forces that we cannot see. It doesn't say that that happens sometimes. It says it it is the way it is, right? It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood it's telling you that this person this thing this situation that you're dealing with this constant poverty situation maybe that you're in it's not what you think it is right it's not necessarily a manifestation of 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 your life circumstances it is something spiritual going on, right? It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, meaning these people uh, or these things, these entities have been given authority. They have been given some power, right? It says against the cosmic powers over this present darkness so there's a ruler over the darkness right a cosmic ruler over the dark areas and so it says against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places so they have an area or a domain of rulership and so they they are evil they are a part of the enemy's plan they are a part of his army and we need to realize that we are not wrestling against what we think we're wrestling against and we need to be conscious using the holy spirit to discern that there is something beyond what we see all right and so this is conflated today with exodus chapter 7 verse 12 for each man cast down his staff and they became serpents but aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs all right and so this is talking about power and dominion right just because the enemy has some power has some dominion has some authority his authority does not match up to the authority given to us by Christ Jesus our staff is going to swallow up their staff right our snake is going to swallow up their snake we don't have to be afraid of the enemy's devices his powers his plans his authority his dominion his rulership because we are seated in heavenly places as well yes he is in heavenly places but we have thrones in heavenly places and we can dictate to the atmosphere we can bind up we can loose we can rebuke to the pit of hell we can use our sword which is the word of god which is a a defensive weapon um, an offensive weapon and and we can strike down the enemy we can actually cut him with the word of god right jesus says it is written that is him using his sword right the sword is the word so he was just bringing that sword out and using it very with precision and cutting at the bone and the marrow he was cutting down all the way through 
right through the enemy because he recognized that his enemy was not flesh and blood but it was a principality a power a ruler it was satan the accuser that he was speaking to and so satan can be put in his place by using the word of god as a sword and so um yeah that is the conflation for today that we need to realize that um our staff is used as a guide right uh, a staff is a guide it can be used to hook it can be used to guide it can be used to tap the sheep make them go right make them go left come over here don't go there there's the water go forward right and so um we are more powerful than the enemy is we can be guided by God's word. We can be lifted up by God's word. We can be caught by God's word. But you know what? Our power, even though we are sheep, we have authority, right? And our authority is through the shepherd. The shepherd is in charge. The shepherd knows his way around. The shepherd is leading and guiding us into all truth. He is going to be our guide, right? And therefore, we are as only as strong as our shepherd, but we have an all-powerful shepherd who is guiding us, who is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And his power is greater than the power of Pharaoh's best magician, right? He is greater than any authority, any ruler of darkness, any cosmic power in heavenly places. His authority is beyond all authority. That's why you call him in the Elohim of Elohim. He's not just a heavenly being like these that are that they're talking about. He is the heavenly being of all heavenly beings. So he is God of all and he has all power. And we have to remember that because if he has all power in his hand and he has defeated the enemy and he has given us authority, then all of these things that we don't wrestle against, but we do wrestle against in the spirit, we have authority over. We are only, um, what do you say? Um, we, if we pray the prayer then we can receive what we believe, right? If you have fear in your heart as you are confronting the enemy, ask the Holy Spirit to take away your fear. If we have, um, and you know, more than likely he will, but if even if he doesn't, he didn't author that fear, right? He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So he's wanting you to operate in that power, that love, that sound mind. He is there to hear your prayers. He knows what you're going through, even as you confront these spiritual forces, but he knows the power that he's giving you. He knows that sword that's in your hand. He knows that he is your guide and he is right there with you through it all. He said he would never leave us or forsake us. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you that we are seated in heavenly places with you. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. And when you sat down, it was finished. It was done. Therefore, all we have to do is walk in this power walk in this rulership, walk in this authority, help us to do it with greatness, God, with precision, wielding the word the way you did against Satan, Lord God. Help us to bind up these spiritual forces of darkness. Help us to loose your heavenly heavenly angels out and, and do your will, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray amen all right you guys if there's anybody out there who would like to receive jesus as their savior and lord go ahead and pray this prayer with me but more than anything believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth dear lord jesus i ask you to come into my heart i make you my lord and savior jesus i believe you died on the cross and i believe you rose again on the third day so that i could be saved Thank you, Father God, for doing this. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of all of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he's going to show you the way and he's going to answer your questions and help you to get through daily life. All right, you guys, go out, be baptized, make disciples of all men, be around other believers so, so you can stay sharp in the word of God. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down with his word, read his word, chew on his word, and ask him questions. Learn how to sit and wait on his reply. His voice is a still small voice, and that's one of the best ways to learn the, the character of the voice of God is just by spending time in his word and waiting on him. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.